glass has found me in my life. It hasn't let me go. It came to me when I was 14 years old and I was asked to help a neighbour with some glass work. So one of the, the things I really love about glass is its fragility. It's so brittle, it can be cut and it's dangerous, it's sharp, it's jagged, it slices you, it's almost a weapon to me. The nature of glass, that it's luminous, it's so versatile, it's so tactile, it's soft, it's lustrous. It pulls me back in so drastically that I've formed my life around glass. Hi, I'm Kirsten Lakin. I'm a glass artist and I'd like to take you on a little adventure with me through the world of glass, the spirit of glass. Spirit of glass is the essence of glass, its luminosity, the colour, light, fragility and the strength of glass, its organic nature of glass. It encompasses all things glass, from flat, sculptural, cut, moulded, things from lead light, stained glass, copper foil, sandblasted, formed and fused glass. What inspires me is the land and the wildlife around me as well as what's happening in the world and how I'm feeling. The hills inspire me a lot. It's the greenery, the wildlife, the light. The light is just beautiful up in the hills. It just brings out the spirit so that I can just create freely and make works that mean something to me. So I gather my creativity from my feelings, my emotions, where I'm heading in life, what I've just experienced. Those things sort of urge me into creating a new piece of artwork. I start with a concept first. So it's the feelings that are exploding out of me. And then I start working on colors, and I work on designs and then it's the techniques that come into play and how I'm going to express those feelings through the glass, whether it's painted, whether it's, uh, it's a moulded, fused and formed piece of work, whether it's going to be a hanging piece, whether it's a light, whether it's a wall hanging that can be inside the house and not against a window or whether it needs to be lit from behind and express that light that's coming through it. The Cathedral of Light was a piece I made during lockdown and it gave me something sort of cheery and light and, and uplifting to make whilst devastation and pestilence is happening all through the world. I was inspired to make this also by my boss and part teacher, Donna Kennedy, and she said, wouldn't it be nice to make a house of glass? And I thought, let's go up one stage. Let's make it a cathedral. So I had a box full of bevels. So I've used all of those and I've cut some in half and I created a beautiful little side angle for the walls and the roof and the, the ceiling and a, a bell tower. Okay, it's a cathedral, but let's add a chandelier anyway. And I put together this beautiful little chandelier. And I thought the whole cathedral needs light. It is light in itself as, as in it's clear. But let's make it shine. So everywhere they're selling nowadays LED strips. And I've cut them and rejigged them with my electrician brother to make them legal and I've laid them all inside the house so that when we turn on the lights, the whole house just glows. It needed to be on a base so that I can move it. So I created a beautiful base for it and I learnt the craft of parquetry. Then we just lift the whole parquetry floor up and we move him all together. So that was finally 
a completed piece. As a glass artist, I have other interests as well. Being able to step out into my garden, spend hours weeding, picking my fruit and vegetables from my trees and my veggie patch, collecting flowers from my garden beds. I love sewing, I love embroidery, I love cooking. I have many, many different interests and all of these fill me so that I can come into the studio and create my glassworks. When I'm working on the idea of a piece, I'll look at the pieces that I've got available to me. So I bring in a lot of used and recycled, reclaimed items. And I'll bring those to life. So whether the pieces become a 3D panel to enhance that panel, or whether they stay flat because of their nature, will push me or pull me in a, a certain direction where I can start working on that panel as a whole. I have fascination with mythological beasts and creations of, of part animals, part other beings. And I created Jackalope. Both my boys are fabulous at collecting things for their mum. I love them dearly because they come and bring me pieces that uh, they find on farms and out on their adventures, four wheel driving. And they came home with these beautiful horns. And I just thought straight away, jackalope has to be a, a, a beautiful hare with these fantastic horns coming off him. And I created him on a 3D panel so that he pops out. He's got that depth and that beautiful fur-like fashion that a rabbit will have or a hare will have. But then I've twisted it and I've managed to copper foil in those antlers so that they're stuck in there forever. And they pop out from the frame and they show you this, this magical creature, this mystical creature that sort of just comes out at you. And I love him immensely. He's beautiful. <laughs>